Welcome tonight to session number two of Quantum Time Travel. Um, my name is Daniel Jedediah. You know, I just realized that last night I forget, failed to <laughs> introduce myself, but I know most of you guys know us either through, most of you through the daily Hebrew declarations. And so you know about us anyway. Uh, and last night I also had the opportunity of being, of having the honor of being able to introduce my wife to you. And she's, she's kind of somewhat in the background, but she's not. She's she's really, this is our ministry together. And uh, this is a place where where she does a lot of the daily de declarations themselves, but she's also a, an awesome teacher in her own right. And uh, we've had some classes where she's been the one that's been doing some teaching as well. So it's, it's not just a, it's just not a one-sided kind of thing here. We both are engaged with, uh, with the things that we teach here. Uh, mine can be a little bit deep and uh, hers is very practical. And I love that because that's kind of the reason why I married her in the first place, because the, the, the one thing that. It's deep too. Just yeah, it's, it's deep. Just as long as you go with me. Speak up. No, I was just going to say, as long as you go with me, um, I didn't tell you this, but I'll also tell you that I heard, well, I just heard in my spirit, man, listening to you um, praying about, these two nights before last night and Yahweh said um listen to what I have to say to you and it was like I could feel um uh, Chris Carter speaking mm. out of me but to a group about imagination mm. and where imagination can take you yeah. and not to be afraid of imagination that it's not don't pretend that it's not part of who Yahweh is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Yahweh, it takes you to where Yahweh is within yourself right. and all that stuff. But you can also go with your imagination as a group. You don't have to necessarily always go singly um, and by yourself, but you can go as a group. And anyway, I, it, it was really, really a sweet thing yeah. to me. And I just felt like I was when you said that about me be, not being practical. I'm also well, you like are, to go yeah. deep. Yeah, you so. are. You do. Oh, without a doubt, she does. Uh, uh, but her 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 focus. I know for me, the one thing I've loved about her is that she she keeps me in line. <laughs> so she's very practical. And <laughs> without her, I, without her, I don't know where I'd be. Trust me. Uh, uh, but she is also very very deep and very passionate. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that that we get to share this tonight. And be able to uh, to work together with one another, and to be able to 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 be able to share on a real deep level. There is one thing that, as we go through the engagement tonight, that I want to kind of let you know ahead of time. Uh, I do have a few things that I want to talk about first, but when we go through the engagement tonight, I'm going to record the engagement itself, but I am not going to record the time of if you guys want to come up and share a little bit i want to have a time at the end of all of this where you have the opportunity you don't have to you're not required to at all whatsoever but sometimes people like to share what the lord has shown them or they may have questions or that sort of thing like we did last night i will not record that part and i do that on purpose one of the things that in our classrooms that it's very well known is that uh it's a safe place it's a safe place where you can just share your heart. And I don't want some of these things that you may be wanting to share out on in the rest of the world. And uh, it may not be something that you want necessarily to share. So I want to leave that open to you and let you know, we will cut that off at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, the meditation slash engagement there. And then when we share, none of that will be recorded. So there is a, a free and an open and a safe place to be able to uh, to share what the Lord has has done in and through you, or or what the Lord has shown you in this in this time tonight. So uh, before I get started, though, Larry uh, wanted to come up and say something real quick, and I'm gonna let him have it, have the floor. Larry, come on forward. Awesome. Larry, yep. Thank you, Daniel. And that's really all I wanted to do was to be able to thank you and Michelle for taking the time to put this together. It's been amazing teaching and um we gain so much and we are students and we get to see you you know a couple times a week but uh for those of you um daniel probably will still mention this himself but he's going to be having a class starting here in the next uh, month or so so highly recommend uh if you have any uh feelings of this is really helping me this is changing me 
you know, get involved. Uh, Daniel is a great pastor leader as well as a teacher and Michelle as well. Um, so there's a opportunity I'm sure it'll be shared in the chat, but, uh, any of you that have been blessed by this, um, you know, there is an opportunity to trade into this. This is Daniel Mich Daniel's uh, means of uh, work. This is his way of uh, building his ministry. And, you know, we participate in that because we're students. But um, or like he says, we are participants in his ministry. And that's how he that's how he treats uh, treats you. And there's just such an honor that Daniel and Michelle do. And it is well worth trading into the value of the class that you're doing right now. De Debbie and I have looked online for things similar and you can pay some really good, you know, uh, expense. Some of them are quite expensive. And, and I think you're lacking nothing by what you're receiving from Daniel. So I just want to honor you, Daniel, for what you're doing and thank, thank you. you. And just ask everyone that uh, uh, it is well worth it. Uh, we know Daniel and Michelle personally and they're good people and they love the God of God and, and love what they're doing. So bless them if, if you feel led to. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that greatly. Uh, it is our honor. We, 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 uh, when the Lord asked me to put together this class, we set it up on purpose as it being an open and a free class. And part of that was because I really believed that, that as the Lord was telling me this, that there was uh, an expression that needed to go out into the, into the world. And I didn't want it to be limited by, um, finances or anything like that. And at least that's what I sensed inside of my heart. Um, and again, so if if you if there's nothing that you can do, don't worry about that. Thank you, Larry and Debbie. You guys honor us greatly all the time. And uh, but as the Lord leaves, lays that on your heart and you do want to to trade into us, we do appreciate that very much. It is the the way that uh, we have the Lord has asked me to commit to this and uh uh, so your trade is is what helps us to continue to do uh, some of the things, the expenses that it costs for putting together uh, classes like this. Uh, but again, I want to make sure that it's open for everyone. So and it's in the chat. Place yeah. And if you and if you want to just check on the chat within the Zoom class itself and you'll be able to uh, find the links of where you can uh, where you can trade into us if you so choose to. So thank you so much for for that, Nikki. <laughs> Your hands raised. I know. I'm almost scared. <laughs> Nikki? You had something you wanted to share? Or was that an accident? It might have been an accident. All right. <laughs> it's a good friend of ours. Love him to pieces. He may not be able to unmute himself. <laughs> he may not. See if this helps. Must have been an accident. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know what I hit. Sorry. Oh, you were okay, man. You raised hands. <laughs> no, I raised my hand. You yeah. did, yeah. Oh, dang! <laughs> Didn't mean to. Oh, you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> right. No, Mitt and I got. I, I no, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, Mickey, Mickey, and I have been friends for many years, and I remember uh, back when we first came here to Mobile. Not long after we first came here to Mobile, and. Uh, uh, we met and there was, we, 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 we've gone to church together for about 20 years or so. And he, uh, during a time of prayer that our church was having at that time, he challenged me on some things that at first I was like, dude, you crazy. <laughs> you ain't right. I almost, I'm, I stayed away from him for a while on purpose because of, because of that. But I love his heart because in doing so, he challenged me on something that Holy Spirit grabbed a hold of me and began to uh, to shake me greatly. And I'm so thankful for for Mickey because it it uh, he he's he's a I, I I personally I see him as a prophet. And so if you if you see a pro if you receive a prophet's word in the name of a prophet, you'll receive the prophet's reward. Whether he's whether he's ever been identified as a prophet or not, it's irrelevant to me. Because I see him in that in that position, and I'm so thankful for uh, uh, for Mickey, and 
I hope you don't mind me sharing that, buddy, but I needed to. I just, I, I love you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Awesome and mighty man of God, too. All right. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and get started with uh, with everything tonight. I'm going to drop your hand for you. Because if not, it's... I'm going to constantly think that you're wanting to talk. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I got it. Now, last night we talked about quite a bit of stuff. We were talking a lot about uh, the whole idea behind the quantum entanglement. We talked about the quantum seed, which is the living letter Yod. And we talked about how it was the light where creation began. We talked a little bit about Zim Zoom, which is the Hebraic perspective of creation. And I, I love the way that this, this, this speaks because it begins to speak about the place of how God created a space inside of himself where he placed us into that. Creation is formed inside of the space that he created. And to me, it, it, it was just was like, duh, that means that we've never known what it was to be like outside of the presence of God. It's always been there. It's always been there. We talked about faith. We went on to talk about the Yod and how Yod was like uh, the mustard seed of faith and how that what was hidden inside of that little tiny mustard seed or that little tiny Yod was literally everything that the creation had. So when God plucked the yod out of his heart and he placed it into that space he created in himself, that it, as it began to expand, it formed everything in the entire cosmos, things that we can see or things that we can't see. And I began to realize how that same measure of faith that the scripture talked about was also that measure of faith or that yod that he placed on the inside of us, his light, if you will, that's that yod, that yod actually references the place of light. And so it was his light inside of us that began to open us up to a greater understanding and how that connected in with, with faith or emunah, which is the Hebrew word for faith, and how there was a connection to the Hebrew word amen hidden inside of the Hebrew word for faith. So basically, the, the things that we've been saying for years, that, that faith says it's already done, now we can prove it. Because in the Hebrew perspective, the Hebrew spelling of emunah, I have the three letters that also say amen. And it proves that Father has already completed and it's already done. And then I started asking the question, of, if God is beyond time and I'm in him and he's in me, then are we not beyond time? And the answer to that question was yes. We went over Ecclesiastes 3.11. We talked about how God had made everything beautiful in its time. And that he also put eternity inside of our hearts. And so there you go. There's the proof of the fact that, that, that even in the scripture itself, it says that God put eternity in man's heart. So he, he made us to be beyond time from the very beginning. And then I also talked about the four absolutes. The four absolutes were, remember these, and remember these four, because to me, they have been a core place of me. Anytime that anything comes up and tries to negate any one of these four things, then I instantaneously know mm -mm, that is a lie because it negates the fact that I know that, and these are the four absolutes. God is always good. He always loves. He always gives. And I am a son. Those four are absolutes. Nothing can change that. Nothing. Except maybe our own decisions. Except maybe our own mind. Uh, now that's a Selah moment. <laughs> that's a little bit of Selah. Except the only thing that really limits God, you do realize this, the only thing that limits God is the way that we see it. Stop and think about that. I'm serious. The only thing that limits God is the way that we see it. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would take that deep statement right there and just be able to settle that in everyone's hearts and be able to see the depth of what that really means. So it's it's me beginning to expand my heart, expand my mind, expand my understanding, expand this place of, of knowing who you are, not only 
you know, and I didn't say this last night, and I'm going to go ahead and say it now because I'm now I'm getting stirred up. <laughs> now I'm getting stirred up. But one of the things that, that I didn't say last night was this place of, you know, the same thing is true with that same question that I asked if God is if God is in me and God is in if I'm in God and God is in me. I also I asked that question about being and he's beyond time. Are we not? But wait a minute. There's another way you can see that question. If God is in me and God is in you and we are together in him, when I approach you, should I not approach you with the same honor and protocol as if I was approaching God himself? Because in just that simple action, I am honoring the father that is inside of you because you are a facet of his, of the diamond of Yahweh, of him, just like I'm a facet. Just that one little statement, how would that change the entire world just by us looking and seeing from that place of saying, should I not approach you with that same honor and protocol as if I would the father himself? Because you are him, just like I am him. If we're all facets of him and we all show a different aspect of who he is, then together we are him. We're an expression. Did not Jesus say the same thing when he was here on the earth? That's why the, the, the Jews, the, the, that's why there was such a, I want to be careful here. Did not Jesus say that on the earth? Did he not? I'll just leave it right there because I don't want to say anything else. Uh, Father, I thank you. I thank you that, that in this place of where we're moving into this tonight and moving into the, the second part of this quantum time travel, Father, you're opening up our hearts and our minds to see into the deep places of who you are. And Lord, that, that as we come together, and just as the, the scripture in Deuteronomy says, as well as the prayer that is made every single day, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kavod Makotola Olam Va'ed, Va'ahavta Eit Adonai Elohecha, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is your glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you will love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your strength. And as Jesus repeated that in the New Testament, he added one thing additional to that. And you will love your neighbor as yourself. You see, that's the whole point of that question that I asked just a moment ago. Should I not approach you with the same honor and protocol that I would the Father himself? Well, let's get into this because I want to show you some script scriptural references about quantum time travel. And of course, this happened in, in the physical realm. Let's talk about Philip. When we when we see the place of, of Philip, we know how he was uh, out in the desert. And he he begins to uh, uh, hear a word of the Lord, and he runs to, uh, or he's talking to. He runs uh, runs with the uh, the Egyptian uh, guy in the chariot. Remember that. And then after he came in, and he got some time, and they sat together, and they began to 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 talk, and they talked about the Lord. Suddenly, Philip disappeared, and he was translated over into a whole nother section. So that's one place in particular in the New Testament, where we hear about the place of quantum time, tra time travel. Now, tonight, I'm I'm saying I know that that is possible. And I so thank, uh, like, Justin Abraham and uh, others, like Nancy Cohen and others who speak about this a lot, and the heart behind the way that they do. And I, I agree with that. I know that it's possible. Matter of fact, I'll, I can, I will tell you this, I believe every single night when I go to sleep, I'm translated out of my body into another place. Many times when I sleep and when I have dreams at night, I go places and I sit down with people and I talk with them. And, and I'm not bound by that place of being right there at the, the particular place. I know that the Lord and the Lord takes my spirit to that place. And, and I don't know if I, if I seem like I'm real to them or not. All I can tell you is that when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I feel like I've worked all night long. 
because I've been helping people all night long in my in my sleep. And I love, I love that. Now, some of you may argue with me and say, I don't know that that's true or not. Well, okay. I'm only limited by the way that I see things, right? So why can't I see them like that? Why can't I see that my body can't do that? Just because I physically don't do it or maybe not had a Philip experience doesn't mean that it didn't happen. You remember we talked about that last night, walking down the hallway at the at the hospital room, <clears throat> hospital wards. You could, as, as long as I did what the Lord asked me to do, who says that it didn't happen? Just because I didn't see it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I was obedient to what the Lord told me to do. And so I can walk away from that place in the full trust and confidence in the Lord, knowing that I did what I was told to do. And I did it with all my heart, my soul, and my strength. And I was doing it because I loved him. And that people were healed as a result of that. I just may not have seen it, right? Well, one of the other places that came up was out of Genesis chapter 28. And part of the reason why I'm bringing this up tonight is because I like looking at the Hebrew. Uh, now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the uh, with the Greek at all, but the Lord has has opened up a a place in me where there's there's just been a greater de- and deeper understanding as it applies towards the the Hebrew, and it actually adds to the New Testament. And allows me to see even more from the New Testament than I had ever seen before. And uh, Ronit shared this with me this morning. And I wanted to to talk to you guys about it a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that yet or not. It's taking a little while to... Are you seeing a uh, single screen? Or are you seeing two? Nothing yet. There, no. double. Okay, so you're seeing me and, okay, good, good. Just want to make sure it's coming across that way. Very good. All right. And this is out of Genesis 28. Now, uh, I'm going over both chap- uh, verses 10 and 11, although all I have is 11 written on the slide here right at the moment. Uh, Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 actually says this, that uh, Yaakov, Yaakov left Bathsheba and went towards Haran, all right? Or in the in your Bible, it may say Beersheba, uh, but the name Bathsheba literally means the daughter of seven. And uh, so there's a, there's, there's a, this is a, gr- a great place within the uh, scripture because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all had come to that place at least one time or another. But verse 11 says this, and he lighted upon a certain place and there tarried all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Now, one of the reasons why I thought this was absolutely awesome, and I hadn't even thought about this was because of the story that goes behind what it was going on with here at uh, at uh, at this place uh, in Haran and the cl- place close to Haran, because this is a story of where Jacob begins to see the ladder, right? But the key part I'm focusing on here is the first part, and it is funny how in Hebrew sometimes the the translations. Unless we can know the Hebrew, it it kind of doesn't describe that well as it's translated over into the English. And uh, so like in this case, this is out of the English Standard Version. That's where it says, and he lighted upon a certain place. In your King James Version, it might have, it might say something along the, along the lines of, and he came upon a certain place. So generally in scripture, we would probably just just pass right on over that because you could see that he's talking about the place of a journey. But there are some key things within here, especially where the, the Hebrew word, and he lighted, is trans, is, comes from the actual Hebrew itself. And the, and the original, the Hebrew letter there, the Hebrew word that actually is translated, and he lighted, is the, is the Hebrew word vayifka. And it's Vav, Yod, Pei, Gimel, and Ayin. This is the Pei here. Excuse me. This is the Vav here, not the Pei. This is the Yod. This is Pei. So for those of you that that uh, don't know Hebrew yet, 
This is the gimel, and this is the ayin here. Now, I've also added in these uh, these vowel sounds on purpose because I wanted to add an, another little layer to this. I want to kind of explain to you guys that in Hebrew, nothing is insignificant. Nothing. Just as the scripture says, there will be not one jot nor tittle that will not be fully fulfilled within the scripture. Now, that's my paraphrase of basically what it says, that the word will not, the there nothing will pass away until not until every jot and tittle. And so that jot and tittle can actually be seen as, as something as little as not only the letter, but also the vowel sound, the frequency of the sound that comes from a particular Hebrew. Remember last night when we were talking about quantum and how the, the whole idea behind quantum entanglement? Well, see, really what we're talking about here is, is the place of quantum entanglement. Uh, but we're looking at it from a couple of different ways, not only in being translated where we go from one place to another, but also the words of our mouth. And when we speak, how the words of our mouth go into the quantum realm. Remember I told you last night, frequency is what begins to to allow that quantum um, quantum particle to then become make its choice as to what it's going to be and it brings it in and that's the action of faith. Now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So when we hear something, it goes into our mind, we begin to meditate on it to the place of where it becomes a part of us and it goes into our heart. and out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth begins to speak. And as we speak, now, if you can go there with me, we're returning the word of God back to him. It's just like this, the scripture talks about in Isaiah, my word, thy word goes forth into all the earth and it will not return back void. It will accomplish all that you set it out to accomplish. And for the purpose that you intended, again, my paraphrase there. And so we see how this actually works and that the power of our words are greater than we thought they were. So the Vav here, is uh, is actually translated as and. So whenever you see a vav at the beginning of a Hebrew word, uh, it's it's usually seen as a prefix and it's translated as and. So I like to call it the and factor. And, and I love that because vav is also a letter that speaks about man. It's a letter that speaks about us. It's also a letter that speaks of a heaven and earth connection. Hey, guess what? We're talking about Jacob's ladder. This is a part of the whole Jacob's ladder story, a heaven and earth connection. So now you see that this Vav is not just translated as and, but it actually adds to the whole story as a whole. Now, below that is, is, is the vowel sound that's called a patach. And uh, the patach basically is an open uh, revelation. It's a place where it's open. In other words, I like to see this because it's uh, in Psalms verse, Psalms chapter 24, and uh, Rone, I'll look at you and see if make sure I say this right, because I'm I'm doing this off of memory right now because I had planned on talking about it. But in where it says, uh, oh, uh, lift up your heads, O you gates, be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. That word doors there is the Hebrew word petach. I believe it's petach. All right. And it's a little bit different of a vowel sound there, but it, uh, it, it it's speaking about doors. So this patach is an open door. It's an open place of, of revelation. So this is where the Lord is sharing something. He's wanting to share something directly out of his heart. The living letter Yod, here in this case, uh, is actually the prefix that says he. So this makes it a, it's it's he that's talking here. And the, the Yod begins to, to declare, again, that place of the light of God. Remember the Yod we were talking about last night? Right below that, there is a vowel sound called a chiric. It the only, the way that I always remember it is it looks like a little tiny p. So when you go to pronounce it, it's got an e sound like p, like p e a. So that's where you get the va yi right of this 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 whole word that we're talking about. But this chiric, one of the other ways that you can see this is as another hidden yod. And I want to teach you something tonight that some of you may not have known. Any time that you see two yods, whether it's two actual letter yods, or if it's something like this, where it's got the yod, the actual yod, which is this letter here, 
and then the chirik right below it, which can also represent a yod. Anytime that you have two yods, it always speaks of yod hey vav hey. It's a secret. It's a riddle. It's a mystery hidden within the scripture. And, and as we learn more about the, the Hebrew, we begin to see these little things that have been hidden there from the very beginning, the ancient paths that we've been, that we've talked about, because now we begin to see them. So now I, now I see this place where he says, and he lighted that both man and God were working together. It was man and Yodei Vafhe that were working together in this place. Now that goes deeper than that. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping things very simple right now. The, the truth is, is that those, those two statements right there actually go very, very deep. The next living letter is the living letter Pei, which is this middle one right here. Pei is a, is a letter that speaks about the, specifically it speaks about the mouth. But it's also, usually when you talk about the mouth, it can be anything from, uh, and generally the way it's translated or looked at is by the words that we speak. Because it's actually the living letter cough, which means the palm of the hand, and a yod that dangles from the top. All right? So y'all remember the, the, the story of the sower? And the sower went out to sow his seed. You know, generally the picture of what we see when we see a sower is someone that grabs their hand down into a bag of seed and begins to sow them by, by tossing off the seeds, right? And... Uh, and and it goes out to the different parts of the of the uh, of the of the ground that that's been tilled there. And of course, you, if you remember the story of the of the sower, some fell on the wayside, some fell on uh, places where it had rocks and stones. Other play others grew, began to grow up, and then the weeds began to grow along with it. And then some fell on good soil. Right. So you you know the story of what I'm talking about. So what it does is it begins to this letter because it's a cough and a yod. And it's speaking of the hand and seed. It's relating that same thing to the words of our mouth. And that the words of our mouth are just like a hand inside of a bag of seed being cast out. God has given us an authority and a power to speak and to, to speak into creation. I've, I, I brought this up last night and I said, I asked the question, I said, if did creation end, maybe I didn't ask this last night, so I'll ask it tonight if I didn't. I was in a class not too long ago where I brought this up. Did creation end with Adam and Eve? Or are we still in creation? Creation still hasn't finished yet. All right. Selah, right? Selah. Mickey, did you have something that you wanted to add, or was that an accident again? <laughs> Probably an accident again. <laughs> All right. Not a problem. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so you get the idea behind uh, what it is that we're talking about, especially we're talking about the living letter pay. All right. Gimel. Gimel is a letter that uh, is literally speaks about a journey. It's a camel. So if you if you ever hear whenever you talk about gimel, you usually talk about a camel, and that's because the the Hebrew word for camel is gamal. All right, and the idea behind it is the camel represents a place of a journey. So usually there's a a, kim, a gamal, a, a camel that's taken from one place to another because it carries the stuff that you're you're carrying from one place to another. Let it be wares, let it be things that you're trying to sell, like on the old Silk Road back years ago. But Gimel can also be seen as a foot. Um, there's a button. If you're on your phone, Mickey, there's a button. And uh, uh, you tap your screen and it should pop up and it just unclick the audio. I can also help you. The little microphone at the bottom left okay. hand. Thank you. Yeah, there you I go. Did, yes. I lost my train of thought now, trying to do all that, but yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> creation continues. Agreed. Like Vanessa said, yeah, it's a continuation of what we do and what we think and what we say. That's right. 
That's right. Absolutely. I'm in him and he's in me. Boom. Boom. That is exactly right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I try to unmute sometime. <laughs> I'm glad you do. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I, I I didn't say this in here, although I, I will leave it open to this. And just this is this is our normal class anyway. Uh, and my, those of you that have been in our classes know that, that this is the case anyway. That uh, uh, I never mind being interrupted. Never mind it. Always come up if you got something to share. Raise your hand, and uh, you know, let me right call on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mute you back. I can mute you from here. Okay. Okay. I can't I can't unmute you, but I can mute you. All right. So anyway, so Gimel talks about the place of a journey. It talks about a foot. So and then Ion, which is the last letter, speaks about the eye and the things that we see. Probably the best revel, best uh, word to translate Ion into or Ayin. Some people like to say it Ayin is um, revelation or revelation knowledge or understanding, but it literally speaks about the eyes and the things that we that we see. Uh, it's funny. There's actually a hidden story within the ion that we spoke about last night. You remember when we were talking about creation and how we talked about how uh, one of the other ways that you could see how Adam and Eve were formed. This might have been after uh, we turned off the recording yesterday, but you know we always thought that Adam and Eve was had a single face, and that there was both masculine and and feminine. In Genesis chapter one, because Genesis chapter one is very clear that he says male and female created he them. In Genesis chapter two, he put Adam to sleep and he removed the feminine, removed the female from out of Adam. Right. So God made the Genesis one Adam in this in his likeness and his image, and God can't really even be. I don't even like to say he's he's male or female because he really can't be limited by either one of those either. So he encompasses all of that. And and uh, and we talked about this last night, how where the, there, there's a Hebraic thought that Adam and Eve were formed uh, with two faces, but they were back to back. So in other words, the back of Adam's head and the back of Eve's head were connected. So... <laughs> It kind of preaches. It kind of preaches a lot when you stop and think about it, because it, it starts to make a little bit of sense, even in our natural world here. Because in that place, and that if if Adam was to be focusing one way, Eve was going to be seeing the exact opposite. She's going to be seeing something completely different from what Adam is seeing, right? Not never, never really both of them seeing now, unless they turn around and allow the other see other one to see from the perspective. And now Adam is seeing from this perspective. Uh, or Eve is seeing from the way Adam saw just a moment ago, and Adam's looking at a whole nother different thing because their eyes were going apart. And the truth is, is that on the Syene, that back back uh, many years ago, that the the little yodes on the top of this were actually facing opposite ways. And that's part of the reason for this story and how this came about. But the heart of God was to do what? He wanted to to take Adam and Eve. He put Adam to sleep. And he pulled the feminine, he pulled the female outside of Adam, and he presented her before him. So what did he do? He separated the two so they could turn around and face each other. Now they could see each other and they could look in the same direction no matter where they were. Because now they had the ability to be able to, if you will, look in each other's eyes and become what they behold just like a husband and a wife do in the place of being able to see, you know, we may see things a little bit differently because of the masculine and the feminine, but isn't that the beauty of it all? Because the place where I'm weak, my wife is strong. The place where she is weak, I'm strong. So our relationship should never be in this place of where, of, of trying to destroy each other because of our weaknesses, but to recognize that where she's weak, I'm strong and I can undergird her. When where I'm weak and she's strong, she can undergird me. And it's and it's a beautiful connection where it's 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 not. I remember back years ago when we when we were first uh, married. You know, one of the ways they used to tell Thank us you. was no, okay. no shush, that's not that long ago. We've been married thirty eight years, so um, so but that's not that long ago. 
but anyway, the uh, the the whole the whole idea behind it was they told us that your relationship should be fifty one forty nine, and I I don't, I don't know. We we tried that and that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that did not work. We realized that that our relationship really had to be 100 100. Period. Not no 5149, but 100 100. And this this proves that uh Adam was well, yeah. Uh great question uh Michael. Um that that if you will it does it says it says they were one. And so in in uh in the Genesis chapter one there, it said they were all part of one flesh. And if you will, that back-to-back thing is see, it is very similar to the living creatures. Uh there's more to that, and I wish I could go into that in this class, but I don't have time to get into the details of the four living creatures uh and how they express themselves not only to the throne and around the throne, but I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a nugget here, but they express themselves in and through us. There's a deep mystery there. And, and so, yeah, there's, there's a, there's an expression where we can connect the two of those together. So that's good, but I'm going to stop right there. It's this word, Kevin. I'm, I'm about ready to, to share that. I'm just getting there. <laughs> so, when we look at this Hebrew word together, we've got the Vav, the Yod, the Pe, the Gimel, and the Ayin. And it, what it begins to, to talk about is where when you actually look at the trip between um, uh, Bathsheba or B- B- Beersheba and uh, Haran, it's actually about a two or three day walk. All right. And this story gives the impression because in, 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 in the Hebrew and in the, the scripture itself, it's not only about what is in the scripture that says something. If you can go there with me, it's what's not in there sometimes that can say more than what's in there. Does that make sense? All right. And so when, um, Roni, did you have something you want to add to that specifically? Come on up. I made a mistake. Haran, Be'er Sheva, it's where I born. Okay. okay. It's Haran, it's a, a south of Turkey. Okay. So we're not talking about two, three days walking. Oh, all right. All right. How long and is it? If I need, I need to fly in order to get to Turkey. Oh, really? It's that far? It's another two country. Uh, oh, Turkey. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. So it's even longer than two or three days walk, is what you're saying. Doesn't... It's impossible. Yeah. It's okay. Gotcha. All right. So, see, we got the same... We still got the same story here uh, with regards to, to this. Uh, but one of the things that we do, we learn from one another, just like you guys... You guys are seeing this tonight, how we learn from one another... And uh, so, look, that's that's even further still away. And so you've got there's got to be this place of a translation. And the idea behind all of this was this: that as the Lord began to reveal this to me, as I began to to take what she had said to me this morning and began to, I looked at the letters themselves, and I saw this place of man and God walking together, and in the place of where uh, that that the Lord was taking to a place where He wanted to show Him something. There was a there was a, a place of where uh, Jacob was moving into uh, a journey, and so and a journey of doing what of of speaking back and forth the Lord. Him and the Lord had a conversation during this time at uh, where he was going, and the gimel there begins to speak about the journey itself. The ayin was the place that he was taking him to a revelation. So what 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 does all this mean? This means that there's a beautiful place of where Father can not only take us to some place like what we were, were talking about just a moment ago, and where there's a translation from something that's way far away, even further than two or three days, much further than that. And he translated him almost overnight. I, I started to say this earlier. Sometimes it's not it's not what's in the scripture that says more than what's in the scripture. 
between verse 10 and verse 11, it just says that he went towards, he left Bathsheba and headed towards Haran. And he lighted upon the certain place and he tarried there all night. So it doesn't talk about the journey itself. There's no thing of saying that it took him a length of time to get there. It almost implies that he was going there overnight and he was there um, overnight. So there was this translation of where he had moved from one place to another in this. So I'm taking you into a little bit deeper of a place because there's a there's a place within the Hebrew that that as Father begins to reveal things to us, he begins to teach us things where we can see deep things hidden inside of the letters itself. And if there's any one other thing that I'd like to kind of teach you guys tonight, it's this. And I believe I mentioned this again last night as well. Uh, but if I didn't, I'm making sure that I mention it here tonight. And that is that there are always two different ways of being able to see something. And there's a beautiful expression in how the Lord can teach us, even from what appears to be something that's completely opposite, that that. Didn't I go over Chata last night? Was that in here? Y'all forgive me if I'm sometimes Chata. I didn't talk about Chata last night. All right. Uh, I may be getting a little bit deep because it's kind of taking me. Remember a that bit. word you said once? Yes. Yeah. Well, you and I talked about it the other day, Chata. <laughs> you know, but yes, uh, the it's funny because Chata is the Hebrew word for I'm going to I'm going to talk about it real quickly. Are you guys good? Are you guys all right with going a little bit deep here for a minute? Is that okay? I promise I'll get back to the whole quantum entanglement, but I I feel the Holy Spirit kind of wanting to open up a little bit deeper of an expression here because I want to show you something that where even what I'm saying here, you may you may look at this and say, "Well, I don't see what you're seeing." Okay, well that's 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 fine. I I'm 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 showing you that the, the mystery of God is the mystery that he shows you. That's the that's the truth of the mystery of God. But one of the things that I've learned as, as I've dug deeper into the Hebrew is that even when a Hebrew letters spell a Hebrew word that has a very negative perspective, I have discovered that those same Hebrew letters actually teach me and show me the way of escape. You remember how the scripture tells us that whenever we go into, whenever there's a temptation, that God has already provided a way of escape. And when I saw this the first time, it just absolutely blew me away. See, the Hebrew word for sin is chata, and it's chet, tet, and aleph. The chet there is a letter that speaks about a fence or a boundary. And so whenever you think about sin, we think about this place of being bound up within the sin. Paul talked about it when he says, who will who will, who will uh, save me from this body of death? Because he was talking about the bondage of the, the law of sin and death when it came to this. And so it's a fenced in, it's a boundary. It's something that, that, that if you will, binds you up. But chet is also a letter that speaks of covenant and promise. Tet, I'll come back to that in just a minute. Tet is a letter that talks about basket, all right? And so, you remember we talked a little bit about this last night, I believe, where the living letter Tet talks about being the goodness of God, right? And God always gives, and God is always good. And so, in that place of where he gives, the question is not what he's giving us, the question is, what are we doing with what he's giving us, right? In other words, that that I have the choice of either receiving something from my own flesh or from my own desires, or I receive because I look in my father's face and I become what I behold and I want to be like him, that I receive to be able to give just like he does. So Tet leaves us with this question of what do I do with what God's giving me? Am I holding on to it? And in the sense of sin, that's exactly what we're doing. We're holding on to, and we're we're taking what God's given us, and we're using it to do, to fulfill the desires of our own flesh. Now, the aleph at the end of the Hebrew word chata 
uh, actually speaks of a couple of different things. Sometimes when it's at the end, it it almost is looking at the Aleph. Aleph is the letter that represents Father. It's the one letter that represents the fullness of Him. And so when that Aleph is at the finishing of a Hebrew word, it's almost like it's diminishing God. It's 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 not it's diminishing it inside of us. Okay, it's diminishing not not Him, but it's diminishing diminishing Him inside of us. And so it's uh, or it may. It can also be translated or looked at as where the Aleph there is saying, well, I want to be God. You remember that the, the Satan, what, what happened with Satan? He says, I want to exalt my throne above that of God. And that Aleph at the end can begin to infer this place of one who has chosen to receive the things of God, but to do things and, des- and fulfill the desires of their own flesh. And so in essence saying, I, pu- I want to put my throne above God. Now that's the negative aspect of that. The chata there could reference the place of sin. However, Mickey, I'll get you in just a second. Let me finish this out, this thought, because I want to make sure it's it's understood. Uh, the other side of that, chet is a, is a letter that speaks of covenant and promise. All right. Tet is a letter that speaks about the goodness of God. And then the Aleph at the end speaks about us being like him. So the same Hebrew word that that is translated as sin tells me that through the promises of God, through his covenant that he made when he when Yeshua died on the cross for us, when when this was taken care of, that he gave us the fullness of his goodness. Why? Because he wanted us to become like him. So the very letters that are translated as sin are the very letters that tell me, wait a minute, it is through the covenant of God and his goodness that I can now be one together with him. So they show me the way of escape. You following me? Now, I hope I, hope I didn't go too deep with you guys tonight. But this is, this is beautiful when we begin to see how in Scripture that, that Father can say, Two different things, really, at the same time. But even though it's translated as sin, and we have to look at it through the story itself, I can see the promises of God. I can see the goodness of God. And that that he is showing me how to walk away from that place of the things that I do wrong. Mickey, do you want to come up, man? Yeah, I was just going to tell you that was 2 Thessalonians 2, where we exalt ourselves. And try to get free. There you go. There you go. Thank you, man. Except Christ be exalted. There you go. There you go. You guys see that? You see the you see how the Hebrew begins to teach us much more than this. Well, let me get it. I got apologize. I got a little off uh from, from where I had originally planned to be going tonight, but I wanted to show you guys some deep stuff tonight. And to be able to stir, let, allow Holy Spirit to stir up that which is on the inside of you, to, to really be able to see beyond the ordinary. Remember, I talked about that last night. See past what's right in front of our face and to see, see beyond that. And that how the word itself is, even words that we, can, we think are negative, actually teach us a beautiful, uh, a beautiful perspective. You see... The truth is, is that I know for me that, you know, a lot of times when we go through difficulties, difficulties sometimes have a way of of almost trying to define us, you know, especially when, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with something like pain or hurt, um, financial issues, uh, sickness, any number of things, people, you know, uh, a feeling rejected and, 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 and so on. All of these things can try to want to define us, especially when we, when we begin to see that, that when we, we know that we're supposed to be connected with one another and yet we're having a difficulty connecting, or we're looking at the promises of God and saying, father, I, d- I don't, I, I don't see this. This may, this must work for everybody else, but it doesn't work for me. How is it that I can break past this thing and really understand what the depth of faith is talking about here? Because when we're going through those things, 
I remember this one scripture that just messed me up more than anything else, particularly because for me, for many, many years, it was something that I lived. And that was the scripture out of the Proverbs that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And boy, I, I I felt like that I was I was right in the the middle of that. Of course, it said that the answer to that is a tree of life. You remember that's the rest of that scripture. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but the answer to that promise is a tree of life. And so, I remember one of the things that the Lord allowed me to do when we when I first began to go into what I call the secret place. I haven't told you guys the depth of that story and don't have time tonight to be able to do that. I wish I could, because it would help answer a lot of questions with regards to this. But I remember I was in a very difficult time and the Lord took me into the place of the secret place. And as he did, he began to reveal to me things that were hidden that I didn't know were there. And I remember the first day that he took me into the secret place. And when he did, he took me to this place where, where we were walking side by side. And, and literally I was in my, in the physical, I was looking at my watch thinking, man, I've got to, I've got to uh, get to work. And my, my job was starting. I was working the afternoon shift that particular day. And, and I was looking at the clock thinking, man, I've got to, I've got to get to work. But I was having such a beautiful time with the father where he had taken me into this beautiful place of the secret place. I didn't want to leave there. I didn't want to leave that. And I sure as heck would have called in sick in a heartbeat. As a matter of fact, what was going on inside my mind that even though I was walking and talking with the Lord inside of the secret place, I was going to ask him, Lord, is it okay if I just go ahead and call in sick? Because I'd rather I'd rather spend the rest of the afternoon with you rather than rather than doing anything else because man, this is a beautiful place. This is changing me on the inside. And and I I I I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to let that go. But what actually came out of my heart, if you will, because when the Lord and I walk side by side in the secret place, it's never a mouth to mouth uh, conversation. It's always a heart to heart conversation. And what came out of my heart when I was talking to him was this. I said, Lord, I I, I never, ever want to leave this place. And he looked at me and he said, well, you don't have to. This place, the secret place is inside of you. And, and I know that may seem like a, a revelation that you may have already had, and you might, may already know that. But for me, and truth be told, I, I, I kind of knew that already too. But when he said that, it snapped something inside of me. It changed something inside of me. And I recognized that the way that I had seen it before was completely wrong. And in this place of where I was seeing it now, I realized that from that point forward, I never had to leave his secret place. And I have not. I have not left the place of the secret place. I've stayed there since that time. I saw this place of where no matter what I was doing, that I could always remain in this place of being constant communication with him. Paul talked about when he talked about prayer without ceasing. And that changed my life. It changed me. But that doesn't mean that I still didn't have difficulties. That doesn't mean that there still weren't times when things got a little bit tough. And I remember the Lord taking me one day and he began to teach me about the very core of what I wanted to talk about tonight and the very core of the engagement that we're going to be moving into in just a few minutes. Out of, this, out of, out of Scripture, Exodus 14, verses 19, 20, and 21. And uh, this Scripture begins to talk about, well, here, let me read it real quickly. I'll read it directly out of, this is the English Standard Version. Verse 19, 20, and 21 say this, says this, Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming to, between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. He's talking about the Israelites and the Egyptians. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Okay? 
Those three verses, when you actually look at them in the original Hebrew, each one of those three verses have 72 Hebrew letters that make up each verse. All right. 72 letters, 19, 20, and 21. And it's telling the story of how the people of Israel escaped and how the Lord, who was walking before them in a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of or cloud by day, went behind them. Why did it go behind them? It, became, it went behind them so that the Israel, Egyptians could never make it, even if they tried to throw a javelin, that it would it would not come anywhere near the Israelites. But God himself stood in between the two of them. And there was such a great divide that they could not penetrate that area. You know, I love this story because, you know, did you, did you know that an eagle is the only one of only one of the few birds that actually do this? If they carry a uh, their young, they don't carry their young in their talons. They carry their young on the back. And the and the birds will their their young will actually stand on their back as they're flying around. Why? Because the eagle himself will stand in between the hunter and his young, and and would be the one to be shot at if uh, it, they were being shot at in the first place. So why? So that the young would be protected. You remember the scripture that talks about that God will be our in the in the original King James it says re reward. But in, it actually literally means rear guard. He will come behind us and protect us. And that's exactly what's going on here, right? You see that? Well, each one of these three sentences, each one of these three verses, each have 72 letters that comprise each one of those 72 verses. And that's because there was a hidden mystery, an ancient path that was hidden inside of those three, uh, those three verses. And so out of this came a, a mystery that's been passed down for many generations within the Hebrew perspective. And we've only just started learning about it over the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And that is the 72 names of God. Now, the 72 names of God that I'm talking about here are different from, say, the names that we normally hear, like Adonai or Elohim or uh, uh, yod heh vav Yahweh, or... Uh, El Shaddai, El Rafa, all those different, all those different names that uh, that we've we've heard before. The seventy-two names of God is a little bit different because it's actually comprised of three Hebrew letters, and that makes up the the that name of God. And so the first one of those, and the way you find those 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 seventy-two names of God is you take the first letter from verse nineteen, the last letter from verse twenty and the first letter from verse 21. And the very first of these is what's known as vav he vav So the first letter of Exodus 19 is a Vav. The last letter of Exodus 20 is a He. The first letter of Exodus 21 is a Vav. And this begins to tell a story. And it begins to tell us a beautiful story. And I remember when the Lord first began to open up the understanding behind what the vav he vav was talking about. Uh, what he was, what he began to show me was that this actually is a way of us seeing what, if you will, the way that uh, Dr. Um, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Ber, or Michael Berg uh, and is his son actually is the one that uh, that put together this uh, Yehuda Berg, and uh, and and what he called the Vav Hey Vav was time travel. And that's part of the reason I I can't I, I called this quantum time travel was was because of the heart behind it. And it's funny that the way that the Lord led me into this, He showed it to me before I discovered about these seventy two names of God. I, I, the, the, my relationship with him has been like that for many times. Sometimes I learn things from, from uh, reading them that the Holy Spirit begins to engage and I begin to learn it. I don't teach from a place of just knowing something. I always teach from a place of actually having walked through it. And so I, anytime I learn something, there's always a gap in time from, from when I, when I actually hear it to when I actually begin to teach it. And, and there's a reason for that because I want to know I, I don't want to learn scripture just to know it. That kind of knowledge puffs up. 
but the knowledge of the Son of God and knowing him in that place of, of in the Hebrew, it's the Hebrew word yada, that intimate knowing him, that intimate place of him knowing me and me knowing him, that's the place I want to teach from, is the yada, that deep, intimate place. And what happened was one day I was I was thinking about this and I was I was thinking about our daughter and I began to to think about back when she was little and I this was about the time that I began to learn about the idea behind frequency and that our heart and our mind do have a field of frequency that go that goes around them so our mind was only just a few inches around our our head but our heart actually has the ability to extend about five or six feet. This is at least what science says, five or six feet outside of us. Now, I believe that. I, without a doubt, I believe that. But I also believe that the scripture tells me that I can extend my tent pegs. I can open up that space that's inside of my heart and begin to encompass a room, it begin to encompass a home, begin to encompass a city, and so on. As the Lord leads, I can extend, expand that heart out to where it goes even further than I could ever imagine. And let the frequency of Father be able to permeate an area. I, I want to just stick with the personal aspect of it here, okay? I don't want to go into all that other stuff. I want to stick to the personal aspect of it. And I remember back when our daughter was little, and we lived on a street in a uh, little street on Valdosta, Georgia. And I remember one of the things that I love to do, I was the kind of daddy who always wanted to be a part of my children. We only had one, one daughter, uh, but I always wanted to, to be the, I was the one that didn't mind getting up and, and changing diapers and, and, and feeding or that sort of thing. And of course my wife was, was taking care of most of that, you know, from herself where she was breastfeeding. And so uh, I would always make sure that she always had things ready for me so that I could get up in the middle of the night, let her sleep. But I had the chance to be able to feed my my baby, our baby. But I remember during those times how, you know, especially as a young married couple, the difficulties, I was still young and very immature during those times. And I remember sitting and, and going in there and wake, uh, when she woke up, I would go in there and sit down and I would begin to feed her. And uh, of course, most of the time while she, I was feeding her, I was paying attention to her. I had a rocking chair that I would sit and rock in. And, but as she began to fall asleep, after I began to feed her, then there was a time where I, you know how when a baby is right in that place of just falling asleep, you kind of want to make sure they're asleep asleep before you lay them back down on the crib. Because if not, they're going to start crying right back again. You got to pick them right back up, right? So I would I would keep that time. And she always laid her, I always laid her head with her head right here on my chest. And I would rock her and rock her on to sleep. The problem was, I say the problem, it's beautiful. I loved it. But a lot of times that's where my mind began to wander. And I began to get worried about things. I began to think about, well, how am I going to pay for this? And how am I going to this? And how am I going to that? And, you know, and, and all the things that are going on inside of our minds that, that as a young married couple, you, you kind of walk through. And I remember that even though my daughter, I taught my daughter well, I, as, my, as well as I possibly could. Uh, and I'm, of course, just, you, you know, all of us can say that as parents. You know, we, we all we can do is the best that we can do. Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do good. Our, our daughter was was a good girl and always had been and always it still is. And uh, uh, but I remember that as she got older, there were some of the things that I began to see as a repeat in her that I know through our experience of after she was born that she never really saw. And I started to think, Lord, wait a minute. I began to realize that the frequency of some of the worries and the frets and the other things that I had going on had not been passed on through DNA. They had been passed down or passed over by frequency, not by DNA. I do not believe in generational curses. And as a scripture, I can prove it to you by scripture. Matter of fact, I have a video on it just to keep from having to go into it tonight. There's a video on uh, on YouTube channel that speaks about generational curses and how I don't Exodus, excuse me, um, Ezekiel 18 and Jeremiah 31 both <laughs> prove that generational curses never have existed. But what I do pass on is that frequency. 
And I said, Lord, then how am I going to go back? I'd, you know, I, 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 she was going, my daughter was going through, our daughter was going through a very difficult time where she was, she was uh, down and she was not very happy. She was running through some, a lot of the difficulties and, and she was just, was really having a lot of heaviness. And I began to realize that I actually had a part to play in that because I would lay on, lay her head on my chest and, and always be going in this place of, of, of worry and fret and fear and all the other things that were going on in my mind during those times when I had her on my chest. I said, Lord, how do I take care of that? How do I, how do I get past that? And he said, Danny, I want you to do something for me. He says, I want you to sit down right where you are right now. You know, let it be in the recliner, wherever it is, wherever you are right now, I want you to sit down and I want you to go back in your mind's eye. And I want you to go back into your heart. I want you to go to the place of the depths of your heart. And I want you to go back in your memory to that time when your daughter, you and your daughter were sitting there in the rocking chair and you were rocking her. So I did. I closed my eyes and I went back to that place. I laid her head on my chest and I began to rock back and forth. And I began to think about those things that I was thinking about during those times. And to be honest with you, it was a bit painful. It was it was painful because I I began to think, Lord, why why is it that I didn't see what I see now back then? But yet in the same breath, I was also thankful that if it weren't for these times, that I would have not learned the things that I did because it was sometimes through the very difficult of times that the Lord began to teach me more about who I really am in Him. And they weren't times of trying to show how bad I was, but trying to show me how strong I was. He saw something in me that I didn't. <clears throat> and, it, and, and it got painful because I thought about, oh, God, those things that I thought during those times. And, and that, that there was a frequency that was going back and forth between me and my daughter in that time. And uh, I heard the Lord say, he said, now. Now that you've spent a few moments and thinking about that, thinking about that pain, thinking about how you realized what what had happened here, I want you to do something a little bit different. Instead of thinking about those things now, now that you've now that you've seen them, now that you've addressed them, and then you've realized that that was a place that you could have seen something differently, but at the time you didn't. I want you to do something different. I want you to. Look at that seed that was planted in your daughter at that time, because if you look at the seed that was planted, you'll notice that the seed is very, very small. It's a really little short, little tiny thing, because you're going back to the time where it was first planted inside of her. He says, I want you to go in there and I want you to pluck up that that little tiny tree, because it's a whole lot easier to pluck up when it's little than it is when it's full grown. He says, I want you to pluck it up and throw it away. And what I want you to do is to replace that seed with the peace of God, with my peace. And I asked the Lord, he would He would actually, and many times, not only from this time, but other times, he would, he would actually have me plant different things. The first one that I planted in this time of me, me spending time with my daughter in this place of being in the Father and in the Spirit, and I was plucking up this small plant, he had me plant the piece of seed of, of peace, and he also had me plant the seed of trust. And he says, now I want you to think about how when you've planted that seed, I want you to change your whole thought process. I want you to lay your hand, your daughter's head back on your chest. And this time I want you to think about the place of peace and how you've learned to trust me now how you've learned to trust in everything. And I want you to allow the frequency of your heart to penetrate down into your daughter from that place now. And so I did. And I began to look at how that changed, how that changed that, that, that there was a new frequency now coming out of my heart. And, and I began to imagine how my daughter would respond if that had been what I had done from the beginning in the first place, 
And I began, so so this is now, I'm now I'm having to move into imagination because if you will, that's my wife was talking about earlier about the place of imagination. I had to imagine now, how would that have, how would that have changed the way that she thought things and how she responded to things when now what she had inside of her was the place, was the seed of, of peace and trust. <clears throat> and as I did, I began to see a new way of her responding to it. Now, all of this was by the spirit. But I would I would go back and do this quite often because then the Lord had me start to do this with many other things. I would go back through in my life where I would see things that I wanted that that I wanted to see differently. Now I'm not I'm not talking about going back and changing the past here. It's not what I'm talking about. We can't change the past. But what I can do is I can change the way that I perceive the past. And because God is beyond time and I'm in him and he is beyond, he's in me, he's given me this opportunity where if you will, I can go to that edge of that, of that event horizon, right at the ed- edge of the black hole. And I can go back and I can pluck up those things that I had seen before and replant something new by the spirit. And see, the beautiful thing about it is, is that because, because being in him and him showing me this process that that by the time when I came back to the, the the moment of now, when I came back to today, I wasn't having to wait for that tree to grow again. Because that time that I had gone back in and plant plucked up and replanted, now that tree was full grown from today. See, I went through a, a, an experience not too terribly long ago. And in this experience, I had we we're having a really difficulty about something. And a lot of it had to do with the way that I saw about myself. And someone called me and talked to me and really challenged me about some things that I had already been talking about in class. It was one of our students. And I already been talking about it in class, but I realized that I had done this with things that I had done, but I did not do this with things, with the way that I felt about myself. In other words, there was still this place of me feeling like where uh, where my usual struggle with faith was, well, that must apply to everybody else, but it doesn't apply to me. And even though the Lord was teaching me something, and I was, I was gaining trust, I was gaining this place of, of a deeper understanding of him, and I realized that I knew these things weren't true, but yet there was still this stupid little nagging thought inside of my head that kept saying something different. That, that kept trying to keep me down in that place of where I was thinking uh, that 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 it really didn't it really didn't qualify me there was I was disqualified or whatever the case may be and I was like I know that's not the truth or because I know what you've told me why is this nagging little stupid thought constantly coming back up inside of me I need to deal with this and when this person engaged me with this I was like oh, you're right I have not gone back and done this with the way that I the way that I saw about myself. And so I did. And I used the same process. And I'm gonna explain how it works in just a moment. Because the Vav Hey Vav is the is is the the way that the Lord showed me. Even though I didn't know it was Vav Hey Vav at the moment with my daughter, later on he began to teach me the Vav Hey Vav. And I saw the very process that I had already walked through. He had already walked me through one on one. But I did this with myself. So I went back to that place. I really couldn't pinpoint a specific time in this case because there was it was like a general time because it, it wasn't one event that happened that caused me to, to see myself as little or nothing. It was an overall experience. So I went back to that time where I first began to feel that that I just wasn't worth anything. And as I did, I began to go back into those, those thoughts and those feelings and how they had, had affected me at that time. And I began to, I began, it made me, it, it made me cry. It made me just really think, oh God, why? It was difficult. It was difficult emotionally. You see, I some of you may think, you know, well, you're talking an awful lot about emotion. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that that one of the things that I've discovered in the Father is that uh, I can listen to emotion, but not be ruled by it. And this is part of what he was teaching me in this, was listening to the emotion, understanding that it's there, because my God has emotions. 
He shows me through his emotions. And he teaches me because of the, the love that I feel, the love that I sense. That place of the spirit of the fear of the Lord when I'm walking in a place where I know I don't need to be walking in. And it makes me want to turn around and run the other direction. And it does. I turn around and run the other direction. But I I, I just I want you to, to recognize that we don't have to be ruled by our emotions. But sometimes we have to engage with them and see what it is that they've they've brought up so that we can see something else. And I remember as I was going back to this place, I went to back to this time and I found this place of where I felt so little about myself and I plucked up that little tiny plant and I threw it away. And I said, Lord, what do I plant in its place? And the Lord said something to me he had never said to me before. He says, I want you to plant the prosperity tree in there. And I knew instantly that he was wanting to show me something that went beyond anything that he'd ever shown me before. And so I took the prosperity tree and I planted it, that little tiny sapling at that time, in that place. And I, I began to address that place of how I would how I would see things now from this place of, of now having this tree planted, how I would see things different th throughout my entire life. And even though this was just an exercise in going inside of my heart and recognizing it, what it began to do is it began to help me to see things from a whole, uh, whole new perspective. It wasn't bound up in the way that I'd always seen it before and counting myself as little or nothing, but that I really truly already had everything that God had already promised inside of me. It was already there. And I could begin to recognize a new way of seeing things and a new way of understanding things. And so I planted this prosperity tree. And I remember then coming back to the moment of now. And when I did, I the, the tree was fully grown. And it was absolutely beautiful. As a matter of fact, the picture that I have up here is a little bit of a picture of the way that it looked like to me. Because when I looked up into the leaves, the leaves were this translucent, beautiful green. So the sun would be able to shine through them, but that there was coolness up underneath of the tree. And it, it created like this beautiful, this beautiful shadowy kind of a green appearance down on the ground. And it was just a, a beautiful place to be able to sit. And over time, I noticed that, that, that on the tree, there was this little root. And this root was perfectly formed in such a way that I could go and sit down on this root. And it gave me a very comfortable place to lean back against the tree. And I could sit there underneath the tree and just enjoy the tree itself. But I also noticed that there was a rock right beside the tree as well. Because when, the, when I went back to the moment of now... The Lord was sitting there waiting for me, and he was sitting on the rock. And I went over and sat right in that little root that was a part of the tree. And we began to have this beautiful conversation. And I realized that this was a place that I could go back to any time. In other words, it was like the Lord had created a new meeting place. We had already had this place of being in the secret place, but this was a special meeting place that he had just for him and I to be able to sit together and be able to talk. And I remember the first time that we were there underneath the tree, he said, he said, this is the tree of prosperity. And the leaves themselves have seeds inside of them. But not only that, the, the, the trees of this leaves are not, the, the leaves of these trees are not only for the healing of the nations, they're a place of prosperity for you. And right about that time, I began to notice that there was a river that was flowing right beside the, the tree. And it wasn't very far. It was just a, a few feet away from where the, where the tree was. And because I began to hear the babbling of the, of the water as it, it was going past us, the Lord and I, as we were sitting under the tree. And it hit me, wait a minute, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. And its leaves will be for the healing of the nations. And, and I began to realize that this was a place of where the, the father had set up because uh, prior to this, that every day as I was going back into the into the tree, I'm, I'm kind of mixing in several different experiences, several different encounters here. But when I first would go, I would the Lord would allow me to, to harvest from the tree and I would remove five or 10, whatever he told me to remove. He'd have me remove the leaves. And in some days, I would eat the leaves individually, and they always tasted like honey. 
And then other days he told me, I said, I want you to do something a little different. I want you to, instead of, of doing them individually, I want you to pile them together like a sandwich and eat them like a sandwich. And the days that I did that, it was kind of like biting into honeycomb. I could still taste the sweetness of the honey, but then I had that chewy part, that wax that that was that was left behind. So it was like a honey that continued to linger. And the truth is, is that the honeycomb is where most of the, the nutrients of the honey is found anyway. It's tucked away inside of the honeycomb itself. And so I was tasting of this place of the honeycomb. And, and, and one of the things that the Lord had me do was to go back and water the tree. Now, I only did this for just a couple of days. But after, and then after a couple of days, that's when I saw the, the river of living water. And he told me, you no longer have to worry about coming to water the tree. That was a place of you recognizing that I'm drawing you back to this place. And I want you to come here anytime that you want to. And usually when I go back to the tree, even now, I'll go back and I'll say, Lord, can we meet at the tree? Can we meet at prosperity tree? And he'll say, of course, anytime. And I'll, and I'll sit back and I'll meditate and I'll go back to that tree. And him and I will have conversations. And we've had some really deep conversations. We've had some times where I've said, hey, Lord, I don't understand this. You're going to have to help me because this just doesn't make sense. I know what your word says. I know what it says about this. Help me to understand this better because I'm, I'm having some difficulty here. And there's this place of, of this beautiful heart to heart. Well, I don't want to get into the the rest of the details of the story because it's 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 beautiful. Be it, but there's there's just a it began to be a place where I knew that the father and I could meet at any time. And it's changed my life since that place, since that time. That even though my wife and I may have been going through some difficult times, that I recognized this place of where as as I would go there, there was a peace on me that I never knew could even be possible. That even through the difficult time that we could stand in that place of being saying, Father, I trust you beyond everything and anything that I could ever imagine. I trust you. And I thank you for this time of you and I having this time of me just being able to be myself and, and open up and say, hey, I just don't understand this, Lord. Help me out. Help me to see something a little bit different. I remember the day not too terribly long ago, and it, it really messed me up in a good way because looking at some very difficult things at that particular day, and I went into the, I went into the prosperity, sat by the prosperity tree, actually that he had me one day plant uh, 49 of the leaves that I had plucked from the tree. And as I planted them, there is now what I call Abundance Grove. So as I go to Prosperity Tree, I'm walking through this 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 uh, Abundance Grove to the place of where I sit with him under uh, pros- under Prosperity Tree. That's what I call it. That's my name's for it. And I remember this one day I was going in there and I was I was having some difficulty and I was I was asking the Lord a real difficult question that particular day. And he moved from off of his rock and he came over there and sat near the root with me. And he put his chest, his head on my chest. And at first I was like, Lord, isn't this, shouldn't this be the other way around? Shouldn't I be laying my head on your chest? But he stayed quiet. And I love it when the Lord does that because in my experience in the secret place, every time that the Lord has remained quiet after I asked a stupid question like that, <laughs> it was because he was about ready to show me. And it was going to be an immediate showing, but I just needed to be quiet just a few more minutes longer. But he laid his head on my chest. And I began to feel this over this, this abundance of peace and this beauty of him saying, Daniel, I love you. And I, I want to hear your heartbeat. I know you want to hear mine. You've you've had your head on my chest many, many times. He says, I want to spend the time of hearing your heartbeat. Because when you're hurting, I'm hurting too. And I just felt this overabundance of the peace of God that permeated every part of my being in that place. And it still messes with me even now as I think about it.
So you see, I've told you this beautiful story, and it's more than a story. It's the truth. It's the truth inside. I, all I can do is to all I can do is tell you if you knew me personally, then then you would see the difference of what Father has done. I know my wife more than anybody else can can tell you that place of where that that through this simple the simple place of just find going to this place of intimacy with the Lord that it changed everything and He showed it to me <clears throat> out of this Father. Hey, father. You see, if you can go there with me, I'm going to explain this, and then I want to walk you through this. All right, I want to walk you through the the place, and we're going to move relatively quickly, but yet at the same time, I'm going to give you plenty of time to try to to allow Holy Spirit to reveal um, things to you as as we're in this place, and then we're going to wrap up the night and uh, wrap up the recording, and then we'll open up for. The engagement time, but I want to share something with you, with this vav hey vav, because one of the ways that the Lord helped me see this and understand this is that there are three positions in the Hebrew letters here. It's a three-letter, if you will, name of God, and Hebrew is written right to left. So this this vav here on the far right represents the future. The hey in the middle represents the the present. And the vav here at the end, at the far left, represents the past. At least that's the way that I saw it. And I began to notice that 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 in this place of where he was taking me in this vav a vav, that this vav, this this past vav, this was the small plant, the small place of of the wrong choice, the wrong thought, the what whatever it was, uh, the the some when something happened to you. That was not even your fault, and something happened to you, and it left a pain or a, or a, a difficulty inside, or it left it left a scar on the inside of you. It, it's that's that that's that this far left one is this past, and it's the little tiny tree that's 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 right here. This right tree, this right vav, this right heaven and earth connection is the one of the full grown tree. This is this is what it looks like when it's fully grown, when it's in the in the place of, if you will, the future. Now remember that we're in him, we're beyond time, but we're looking at it from these different aspects. Why? To begin to change our way of seeing things, to begin to change the way we can't change the past, but we can change the way that we perceive the past. Can we change the future? Yes, if we watch the words that we say today, we can also change the future. But sometimes it takes us going back to the past and seeing something different so that we can begin to speak something new into the fu- into the future, right? And that's the reason why the living letter Hey is right in the middle of this. Hey is a letter that speaks of breath. And it speaks of the place of framing something. See, when we speak, our actual breath itself has a frequency. Our, there are... Uh, there are turbinates. There are there are uh, not turbinates, but cartilage that's on the inside of our lungs. That as the air passes past our lungs and out through our mouth, there's a frequency that comes because it was passing over this this turbulent cartilage that's in our in our breath. But that's only one part of 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 words because as it hits our vocal cords. Then our, our our body is engaged into it, and our vocal cords add a frequency into that. Then you add in the back of our mouth, the lips and our tongue, and the palate of our mouth, and now that helps us to form words itself. So that's where we take the frequency that began at our vocal cords, and we begin to form the words that allow us to frame up what it is that we're talking about. You never really thought about words like that before, have you? How how the, the the just the very action of it really preaches itself. It speaks a great depth of a mystery of God just in the very the way that the, the, the words that we speak and the way they come out are are framed. But in that place, there is a framing because our words begin to frame our reality. Our words begin to to frame our future. In other words, the words that we speak have power. And if they're always negative and they're always looking at it from a negative perspective, then all we're going to see is that place of negative. But when our words begin to change and we begin to speak because we're seeing things from a whole new perspective now, and we're we're operating from the place of peace and the trust of the Lord, then it begins to change completely and our words begin to change and it affects our future. What I, What I want to do tonight 
with you guys is look from that place of, if you will, pulling from the future and planning it in the past. I remember, you remember I told you about the Abundance Grove? The Lord wants me to go back and tell you that that part of the story because it, there's a, a really cool part in that whole place. I remember the day he told me to, uh, he told me to pluck 50 leaves and he told me to eat one of those. The other 49 that he wanted me to do something with those leaves. And so, and that was that that was when I planted them. But as the Lord told me to go and plant them and plant them around where prosperity tree is, that he said I I I I could I could see a layout of the way that he the the way that I wanted to see it formed. He he didn't tell me how to do it. He just but I saw a pattern of what he wanted me to do in the laying out of those leaves being planted into the ground. But as I began to go and do that, I stopped and I asked. I, there was it was a thought that just hit my head, out of my spirit, man. Now I could say it was out of my head. But I realized later it was definitely out of my spirit, man. But it was just a thought that suddenly hit me. And I looked at the Lord and I said, hey, is it okay of instead of planning it right here and right now in the moment of now, because this is the place where you and I are right now, would it be okay if I go back to the past and plant these 49 leaves in the past? And he knew what I was thinking because I realized that by going back into the past and planting him in the place of the past, that when I came back to the moment of now, I wasn't waiting for the trees to grow. They were already fully grown. And I, with a big smile on his face, he said, yes. So I went back to that time, planted those other 49 leaves And when I came back to the moment of now, now there was this beautiful abundance grove with prosperity trees sitting right there by the river of living water. So we're going to talk about things. But part of the things that we're going to look at as we walk through this this meditation, as we walk through this engagement, is that, that I want you to think about things that maybe you had done in the past that you wished you had not have done, things that maybe happened to you. I want you to pick one thing, and I'm just trying to give you some examples. Well, let it be something that you did, or do you let it be something that happened to you, and you had no control over it? And you want to change the way that you saw that. It caused a lot of pain, and it caused a lot of difficulties. It caused you to feel like you were less than you should have been. It may be something where you go back and you see where you 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 notice that there was a time in your life when suddenly you began to see yourself as less than. It didn't necessarily have to do with a, a, a something that you did wrong or something that you did right. It was just a time where maybe somebody was talking down at you or or there was just a real difficulty or you were young and you were stumbling over yourself all the time or whatever the case may be. I'll hold that Holy Spirit be the one that reveals those things to you. But it left you with this place of always feeling like you were never enough or you couldn't do it. And you want to change the way that you believe about yourself. Or maybe you need to go back and ask forgiveness. Maybe it's something where you need to go back and say, I need to forgive someone. I don't have access to them any longer. And I don't I don't have the ability to be able to, to, to go in front of them and ask for forgiveness of something that I may have done. So it may be that you have to go back and and look at that. And so if that's the case and you want to ask forgiveness of those you can no longer contact, then let that be the one that he walks you through tonight and go back and 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 uh, pluck up that root of bitterness, pluck up that that root of unforgiveness because even scripture talks about about that, about the root of unforgiveness. and we're going to pluck it up, we're going to cast it away and we're going to plant something new. All right. Are you guys ready? Michael, you got your hand up, man. Yeah. I I wanted to give a quick testimony on how that's relevant um, in normal life as well. Um, Without going into the the, the story, um, we had went, a, a team of mine had went into the place where the lamb was slain before the foundation of creation 
And just to make the story quick, I was explaining to this group of people, I said, look, at if we stand here, we have the capacity to change things in the current time because this is the foundation of creation. And so I had a hat in my hand. And I said, this hat is completely dark, dark blue, almost black. Well, what happened if I'm standing in this place and I said, let's add red? Instantaneously, that hat, hat changed color. Yeah. And so another yeah. scenario was where, without saying this person's name, I was looking into an individual and just spending time trying to understand who this individual was, asking different people that I knew, hey, have you ever heard of this person? Have you ever heard of this person? And everyone I talked to had not heard of that person person or even knew who they were and we and i had gone back to this place of the lamb slain and because i was spending so much time looking into this individual something had changed within creation and within my own life that that not two maybe three weeks later i went back to some of those same people and they said i've you know, asked them the same question have you guys looked into it and they're like what are you talking about we've known who this person is for 20 30 years and so Time is completely changeable. You'll see in our healings where yeah. people won't even remember the thing happening. You know, so it's it's definitely all about going to Christ and 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 being where He is the construct and the creative force in creation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Because you know, I, I just realized that I didn't I didn't say the response from what happened with my daughter. Because I remember not long after the Lord began to to walk me through this, uh, asked my wife. Suddenly she she began to uh, when when we talked, I could hear a smile. I could I could see a smile on her face. She lives in Arkansas, so we didn't weren't able to to see her face to face all the time. But but I could hear a smile. She began to become happier. She began to become more comfortable in who she is. And and I was I was so thankful as a result. And I knew it had a directly related to the place of just like what Michael was saying and how she had begun to 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 change as well. And uh, she was much happier. And so even though this is changing our perception, the beautiful part about this is if God is beyond time. Then. Can we not go back and change those things, change the way we see about those things, and then change the way that we respond or react or speak about them as a result of that? Because that new that frequency changes everything, even from the past to the future. That's what we talked about last night with Einstein's theory of relativity, right? How it, how it could change, how that that in him we're beyond time, and it's there is no such thing as the past, present, and future. It's all the moment of now to him. You see, that's the way God sees you. He sees you in the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ from the very beginning, because he sees the finishing from the beginning anyway. And so a lot of times it's this that we have to go get over. Yeshua's blood has already covered us. Everything's done. It's all dealt with. It's all taken care of. This is the only thing that we're dealing with is right here. So... I want you guys to close your eyes, if you will, with me. And I'm just going to take a few minutes in this time. I realize we've been talking a little bit longer than than expected tonight, but that's that's kind of how our classes go sometimes. Oh, but Father, I thank you that that in all of this, Lord, that you have opened up a place of now us being able to see beyond. And Father, we thank you for Vav Hey Vav. We thank you for this place of where we can go back. So what I want you to do is take a couple of deep breaths. I want you to close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. If you need to sit back a little bit, you know, in a place where you're comfortable. And I want you to take a deep breath in. Hold it for two or three seconds. And then exhale. Do you feel the difference in just that one single breath? Do you feel kind of a place of where you feel the peace of God beginning to just settle everything inside of your spirit, man? I want you to take another breath. This time, I want you to fill up, if you will, fill all the way up to your head. Hold it for a second or two. And then blow out. But I want you to blow out from the very depth of your heart. Allow your mind to settle. 
Allow your mind to be quiet. Choose to not think about anything except Father. Let's do one more deep breath. Take a deep breath in. All the way to the top of your head. Hold it. And then very slowly release all the way to the bottom of your heart. Allow your spirit to begin to move from your head, if you will. Your spirit's all over you. It's it's just, but I want you to move from here, from your mind, to the place of your heart. I want you to experience the peace of the Father like you've never experienced it before. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're permeating every single person that's here tonight. Everyone that's listening to this on video, Father, and you're 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 expressing to them that place of the of the deep peace of rest inside of you, Father. And we thank you for that. I want to just take a minute just to let you just let that peace begin to permeate. Allow your mind to remain silent, except for thinking about Father. Just take regular breaths in between. <coughs> I want you to recognize this piece. I'm staying here on purpose. Because I want you to begin to recognize this place of peace. And one of the things that we're going to do when we come up out of this, this, this meditation is we're going to grab a hold of the peace of God that we felt in here. After we've completed with the Vabe Bab, we're going to grab a hold of that peace and we're going to make a choice to never let go. To always remember this place of peace that you're sensing right now. And even more so after we go through the Vav Hey Vav. All right, I want you to go. And I want you to go to this place. Son of the, like your Holy Spirit saying, go to this place of where you found something difficult in your life. Let it be something that happened to you. Let it be something that you did. Let it be just an overall feeling, maybe a feeling of never being quite enough, or maybe a feeling of always being told you're little or nothing, or maybe being in bondage, being bound to, to, to something. Or maybe it was something that you did wrong. But I want you to just pick one thing tonight. Just one thing. I don't want to go too deep and try to do a bunch of things at once. It's better if we go back and do this one thing at a time as Holy Spirit reveals to us. But once you've found that thing, I want you to start to think about it. If it's something that happened to you, then think about that place of the feelings that you had during that time. I want you to address the place of what it made you feel like, whether you did something wrong or whether it was something wrong that happened to you or whether it was the way you felt about something. I want you to remember those feelings. Because in addressing those feelings and looking at them and recognizing that they did change something in you at that time, the first time, then we recognize that place of where we it, it made us it caused us to see something a little bit different it caused us to see something difficult it caused us to see whatever it was that it caused us to see at that particular time and realize that it did affect me it did bother me think about the way that it did bother you why did it bother you This is why I told you that in especially addressing those things of emotions and those things that, that, that we felt and what, what happened during those times of, of what we felt, it sometimes brings those emotions back up to the surface. Allow Holy Spirit to allow that to come out of you. I'm going to give you just a few moments just to think about that.
You may even begin to remember smells or you may even begin to remember details that you hadn't thought about in a long time. And it may even add a little bit more to, to all of that. But I want you to recognize that it did to have something to did that it did affect you. Because in, in recognizing that it did affect you, you're looking at that and you're saying, you know what? I know that this happened to me, but I'm choosing to see something a little bit different now. I want you to look to that place of when the first time that it happened or when the first time that you did that or whatever the whatever the case may be. And I want you to look for the little tiny plant that is just now beginning to grow. And you recognize that that was the, the place of where the emotions began. That's where the difficulty began. And I want you to look at it because it's just a little tiny thing. It's just barely coming up out of the ground, a little tiny green thing at the top, and maybe even just a few leaves, but nothing much there. There's definitely no fruit. There's definitely nothing else other than other than the fact that you can see it beginning to manifest at this place, because this was the first time that it ever happened. And I want you to look down at it. And I want you to pick your fingers, go over there to it, and I want you to pluck it up. And it comes up so easily. Because all it is is just a little single taproot down into the into the ground. There's nothing else there because it's just begun to grow. I want you to pick it up and I want you to throw it away. Completely throw it away from you. Because in doing so, you're saying to those emotions, you no longer have the ability to rule over me. You no longer have the I recognize that that those emotions cause me to feel the way that I do now. But in recognizing that they had the ability to do that and me to be able to recognize that I can pluck that up and throw away that I no longer, I now no longer allow that to have any power over me. I may still feel those emotions a little bit. I may still deal with that some things a little bit from time to time, but I know now because I went back and I purposefully plucked up this little tiny, tiny plant and I threw it away that it no longer has anything to do with me anymore. But we've got to put something back in its place. The Father wants us to plant from the place of, of where we see him now, the future, the place of where he has taught us who he is, where we've looked into his face and we've become what we behold. And, and he begins to teach us and say, hey, I want you to plant this here. Let it be peace. Let it be rest. Let it be prosperity. Let it be uh, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Let it be the whatever it is that the love of God. He'll give you the name. He'll tell you what to plant. And I'm going to be quiet for just a few moments as you go and try to find and you you ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to plant in this place? Thank you. Now that you know the plant that he wants you to plant now in its place, I want you to take a hold of the plant that he gives you, that seed that he gives you, and I want you to plant that in that in that hole, that same place where it came from. I want you to plant it right back in there. It's a seed. I want you to cover it over because you know that the seed is going to be spoken to and it's going to begin to grow because it's the seed of his peace, the seed of his love, the seed of his goodness, the seed of his prosperity. And now looking at this new plant, this new seed that you've now placed in here, I want you to look at the same situation that you were looking at just a few moments ago. And I want you to choose to see it differently. Because now you've stripped away the power that it had over you. You've thrown it away. And Father has given you his strength, his peace, his joy, his prosperity, his love, his goodness, whatever it was that he planted in that place. And, and you're now beginning to see 
what he, he, he had said from the very beginning. All things do work together to the good, to them that love the Lord. And he always loves us. He always gives. He's always good. And we are sons. And I want you to begin to think of from that place, having planted this new plant, how would you see this when you see it from the perspective of the plant that he told you to plant, the seed that he told you to plant? If it's peace, how would you respond to that? Not stopping and saying that it didn't happen to you any longer, but you ripping up the root of bitterness or root of difficulty or root of whatever and replanting his seed. How would you respond to that differently had another choice had been made, had something else had happened in that place? How would your life be different? How would you see things now if you saw that from that new perspective? And we'll give you a moment or two to think about it. Because what it's doing is it's engaging you in that place of recognizing, wait a minute, I am now looking at this from a different perspective. Father has given me this place of being able to rip up this root of bitterness. You know, it's in scripture already where he talks about, about ripping up the root of bitterness. Just we've never really been taught about putting another on something else in its place, or maybe we have. But the Lord's teaching us a whole other deeper level of this. How would you act? How would you respond? How would you see things now? I'll be quiet for just a moment as you begin to think about that. You may notice a smile beginning to come on your face. Or you may begin to sense the peace that passes all understanding, being able to permeate every fiber of your being. Or your whole body may move into this place of the rest of God. Just being in his rest. Or if it's pain, you're going back to that place of where you see what it's like with not having any pain. Just like you were when you were a little child, running around and, and jumping up and down and doing all the things that you did before. Because you're seeing it from that place of, of not having any pain. The, 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 the difficulties are no longer bothering you. Spend some time and think about that. If you need to, could you take a couple of deep breaths just to allow it to settle in your spirit, man. Allow that, just that overall peace in your body just kind of permeate. It's been, it may have been a little bit emotional in the midst of all of this. Because you want to begin to grab a hold of what you're feeling right now, that place of what you're sensing right now, of the peace of God, the fullness of God, the glory of God, the goodness of God. And I want you to literally, not only in your spine's eye, okay, because I'm going to do it with you, not only in your mind's eye, but I also want you to do this literally. I want you to take your hand, I want you to reach out, and I want you to grab a hold of that peace, Grab a hold of that goodness. Grab a hold of the, the heart of the Father that, that he is revealing to you. Let it be whatever it is. His, his joy, the expression of confidence. I want you to reach out, grab a hold, and I want you to think about a scripture that always has been enigmatic, but it's not going to be any longer. Because... That scripture is this, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Because what the Father is walking us through is reaching out and grabbing a hold of this goodness. And we're saying, Lord, I will not let go. I will never let go of your peace. I don't care if hell is breaking loose around me. 
I know this place. I know this moment where you have taken me right here and right now. And I grab a hold of your peace. I grab a hold of your goodness. I grab a hold of your love. I grab a hold of your trust. I grab a hold of your confidence. And I say, Lord, I will not let go. Even if I have to sit down and say, I will not let go, then I will do that. Because I will violently hold on to you no matter what's going on around me. And I refuse to let this go. Because I know what you've done in me. And I won't let anything take it. I won't let anything steal it. I will not give it up. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have shown us this place where, Father, you can help us begin to to come out of this place of the way that we've always seen things and to be able to see from a whole new perspective. Father, you have made us to be like you. But we're, 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 we're having to constantly deal with our head. And thank you, Father, that you've given us a way where now we can go back and we can, we can change the way that we perceived these things. We can change the way that we respond to them and the way that we've always seen them. Father, we can recognize that in that place, we can grab a hold of your goodness. We can grab a hold of your love. We can grab a hold of your peace. We can grab a hold of confidence and trust in you and never let go of it. And we choose to do that, just like the bulldog at the end of a bull's nose. Then, Lord, no matter how, how, how much that bull flings that bulldog back and forth, that bull's coming down because that bulldog's not going to let go. The tenacity of saying, I will stay here. I choose to do this. I choose to do this. Lord, I know that you never let go, but I want to let you know that, Father, I choose this. That witness of you and me together. That witness that I know you have made me whole from the very beginning. And you're teaching me how to see from a new perspective. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you for this joy, this peace, this love that you've given us out of this place. Thank you. If you want to, just take a couple of deep breaths and kind of begin to just come up, if you will, and really knowing that the Father has shown you something differently here. You may want to, I want you to go back, and I don't want you to this to be the only time that you do this. I've, I've taught you something that where, as the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you, You've got a way, a place where you can go back and you can you can begin to see those things from a little, little differently. You know, there's a Hebrew word in in uh, that we teach a lot in our classes, and it's the Hebrew word nativ, n a t i v, and in the English n a t i v. And basically, what a nativ is is a personal, private path that the Lord walks you on. And so, as you do this, the Lord is going to walk you through something special. He's going to walk you through some things that that he wants to show you that goes beyond. Just like he did with me when he started to when he showed me about prosperity tree and then abundance grove. You might not have a prosperity tree or abundance grove. You may have something completely different, but that's okay. The father's going to walk you through that. Allow him to show you how he wants to interact with you, how he wants to engage to you, with you. He made you special. He made you specific. He made you in a way where you're going to be different from everybody else. But that's exactly what it was supposed to be. Because we all can't do the same thing. We're all meant to have to be a part, and each part is important. So allow Holy Spirit to begin to, to allow you to walk through this place. And don't worry about it. You know what truth be told? You don't have to go out and tell everybody about what's happened. You can keep it to yourself. I'm sharing it with you because the Lord asked me to. But the beautiful part about it is that you can keep it between just you and him. That beautiful yada, that beautiful intimate knowing of him. And, and 
You can he can allow you to to walk on this path of just you and him together. Yeah, he talks to me too. He talks to you too. We can all have natives. We can all have these personal private paths. We can all have these, and and, and I love them because because it's not about signposts on this native, on this private personal path. There are no signposts, but there are trees and there's stumps and there's rocks. And there's these little places where father stopped and said, hey, I want to show you something here. And so you, only you and him know the path because there's not no signposts along it. Nobody else can walk the same path you can because you knew what happened along that path. You saw the process of what he was carrying you through. And he led you to the beautiful place of intimacy with him. So, Father, it is from this place that I speak over all those that are here tonight. And for those of you that are listening to the recording, we're, we're about ready to kind of shut this down, shut the recording down. And we're going to move into a time of, of engagement with one another. But before I go, I want to speak the blessing over all of you, as we did even last night. Because I believe it's important. It's the it's that's that's the expression of what you have done here, Father. And this is your blessing, the Shefa, the flow of your abundance from from the throne of God as it comes out from the throne of God itself to us, to each one of us individually, and to each one of us corporately. That Father, as we stand in this place and declare over each and every one that is here tonight, Ivarecha Adonai veIshmarecha, Yeer Adonai Panavalecha. Vichunecha, Yesa Adonai Panavaleka, Vyasimlecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face, his presence, his countenance towards you and give you peace. Blessings, Shalom. We love you guys. And thank you for being a part of quantum time travel.